Man, WWE, you did a great job with Raw this week. I mean, I totally had my pillow ready. I was asleep for most of the action. It was awesome. Great job, WWE. You helped me out with my damn insomnia problem. Except that's not your job. Your job is to entertain me and excite me. <sighs> Monday Night Raw Review. What is up, guys? Chase Oliver here bringing you my Monday Night Raw Review. Now, let me just say this. I did not enjoy this episode of Monday Night Raw. If you enjoyed it and you liked it, that's good for you. I didn't. I felt this episode was bland, boring, and a lot of the storylines and the developments did not make sense to me whatsoever. You can call me being over-analytic here on this review, or you can just listen to my opinion and let me express my problems with this episode of Monday Night Raw. Let's kick it off with the opening segment of Kane and Daniel Bryan. Did I like that they made Kane look like a dominant force and attack Daniel Bryan? Yes, I did like that because, hell, fucking no one cared about Kane anyways. Kane was just someone that was going out in suit pants and acting like a corporate machine. So it's cool to see Kane no-sell offense like it's 2003. Here's my problems with this attack. Although it was a good execution of an attack, one, when they brought out the stretcher, I said to myself, isn't Daniel Bryan the same dude at WrestleMania 30 that was in a stretcher himself and he ripped himself off just to go and win the WWE Heavyweight Championship in the middle of that ring? Haven't we shown that Daniel Bryan is pretty much like a Superman and he doesn't get hurt all too often and he can fight through pain and adversity? So why make Daniel Bryan look weak here when we've known in the past that Daniel Bryan can fight through this. That's stupid booking. And not only that, why make Kane look dominant just for a one-off with Daniel Bryan and Extreme Rules? I mean, if the WWE had any balls whatsoever, they would give Kane the strap. And this is not me just being a Daniel Bryan hater because I know a lot of people would be like, oh, here you go, hating on Daniel Bryan because that's not the case. You're making Kane look dominant for one match. What's Kane going to do after this? That's the question to you. What are you going to tell me that Kane's going to do after this to make him look like a dominant monster? He's doing nothing. He's not going to do anything after this. I mean, in all honesty, it just felt like the WWE was like, Daniel, we know you're having a rough night. Your father just passed away. We want you to just keep your head cool, keep your head relaxed. Just go out there, do the promo segment, and that's it. That's pretty much what they wanted to do with Daniel Bryan. They were trying to write him off. Because he wasn't feeling good. And I feel bad for Daniel Bryan. I really do. Rest in peace to his father above. I do feel bad for Daniel Bryan. But, I mean, couldn't you have done something else? Couldn't you? I just feel the WWE, even though, yes, you made Kane look strong and look like a threat at Extreme Rules, he doesn't ultimately look like the guy that could probably take a belt off Daniel Bryan. He doesn't ultimately look like a guy to win the whole damn thing. He's just a placeholder guy. We all know this. If Kane wins at Extreme Rules, I'll give WWE credit for having some sort of balls here. But he's not. So for me personally, this, feud, this little segment right here, although good for Kane to establish his character again, it's bad because we all know it's not going to do anything for Kane in the long run. This is all benefiting just one man, Daniel Bryan. That's just it. This feud is one-sided. It's all about Daniel Bryan. It's not all about Kane. They're not progressing at the same time. Daniel Bryan's just going to keep on progressing and progressing while Kane is just going to stay down here. Right now they're here. Daniel Bryan's going to be here by the end of Extreme Rules and Kane's going to be down here. That's my problem with the segment right here. And the IC title turning. Bad News Barrett defeats Sheamus. Oh, look at this. Another Wade Barrett push. How long is this one going to last before he loses the title to Kofi Kingston? And we all know Bad News Barrett is winning this, this tournament. We had Cesaro versus Rob Van Dam, which was a pretty solid match. And you actually did something smart here, WWE. You had Jack Swagger attack Cesaro. And this makes sense here, guys, because the thing is, Jack Swagger should hate Antonio Cesaro. Why in the blue fuck? If you had a rival that was in a tournament, a most important tournament of his life, and you had the chance to ruin him during this tournament, you would do so. That's what Jack Swagger did, and that made sense. And I said, great job by the WWE here, booking this, booking this match to be a good match for Extreme Rules, Good mid-card action. They're actually doing something with their mid-card. But you know what? The WWE decides, oh, we're just going to waste this on SmackDown. And instead, we might tease a Cesaro versus Rob Van Dam match at Extreme Rules just out of the blue because RVD needs a paycheck, brother. That's pretty much what they're doing. They have that stupid backstage segment for a reason. Unless I missed something because my stream was cutting in and out during this episode of Monday Night Raw. And no, that did not affect my viewing 
experiences because I saw good episodes of Raw where my stream would cut in and out. Maybe they made the match for main event, but really, to be honest here, you're just going to throw Cesaro and Swagger, a, a match that has a good potential to be a good match for your pay-per-view, a feud that has good potential to reignite the mid-card division, but instead you might just give RVD a paycheck versus Cesaro at Extreme Rules. Just dumb. Just dumb, in my opinion. And then not only that, the tag team match. Yeah, the Usos beat the Road Dynasty, and now Cody Rhodes is upset at Goldust. Why should I care about Cody Rhodes and Goldust? They lost their steam. WWE, just because you're the number one wrestling company, just because you have all the money in the world, does not mean you can pull the trigger whenever the fuck you want. It's a thing called timing. It's like in certain TV shows. You want to see a certain character die at a certain point. You don't want to see a character just drag on because he's a fan favorite. That's just dumb. Certain characters must die. That's what makes the TV show enthralling. The Rhodes Brothers breaking up would be great if you did at the right time. But no, Cody Rhodes lost all the babyface steam that he was getting during the fall. Goldust lost a lot of his steam. And why? Because you guys were trying to push the New Age Outlaws versus the Usos, which never really happened at the end of the day. In all honesty, WWE, Cody Rhodes and Goldust does not have that much interest anymore. You would have to try to do something different. You would have to build this up for a long period of time for fans to care again. You guys let them be tag team champions for far too long. You let them be a tag team for far too long. And the payoff on the result of the Rhodes brother feud in the end of it all could just be a Cody Rhodes heel turn that does nothing for his damn career. If my question is, why does Cody Rhodes need to turn heel in this situation? Why can't Goldust turn heel? He's a part-timer. Cody Rhodes is actually someone that could be on your roster for what? the next 10 years, and he's the one that's going to turn heel in this situation over his brother who, after this feud, is just going to disappear? Just dumb. Dumb booking. I'm sorry. And, eh, Brian Baxter versus the Usos. Does anyone really care about that tag team match? I mean, I do because I like both teams. But other than that, I don't really care. You guys don't really care. Just a simple sneak attack. Big deal. Woohoo, we should celebrate. Tag Team Division's back, right, guys? Right? No, it's not back. <laughs> They're just going to do... This is the same formula the WWE's been doing with the Tag Team Division for the last two years. <laughs> <coughs> just... Oh, God. And the Evolution versus Shield bit. It was a good segment. I will not deny it. I did like it. And for all those making fun of Triple H's voice, just understand Triple H is god -ug. And Triple H has to go all across America uh, on Easter to give out beautiful sermons. So, of course, his voice is going to be shot. Triple H was giving us the world Easter. You respect that out of God. Uh. But the one thing about this Evolution segment I like was just seeing Evolution again in suits. When was the last time my boy Randy Orton looked so damn fly? It's been a long time. And they call out the shield. And here comes the shield. And the shield cut a really solid promo. And... Dean Ambrose called Randy Orton a cream puff, which led to everyone on Twitter saying, oh, that's a great insult. Really? A cream puff is a great insult now? I bet you if John Cena set, called Randy Orton a cream puff, no one would be laughing. No one would think that's a good insult at all. In fact, people would shit on Cena and say, eh, stupid PG jokes. But we hear Ambrose call Randy Orton a cream puff, and all of a sudden it's the funniest shit ever. Get the fuck out of here. And I'm sorry. This just made the Shield look like dumbasses to me. It it really did. It, this segment made the Shield look like dumbasses here because here they are saying, we're going to kick your ass right now. They go down to the ring and a bunch of guys come out and the Shield are like, nah, we're not going to fight you anymore. We're just going to scream at you and call you guys cowards. Shield, you said it didn't matter who was in your way. You're going to beat the shit out of these guys. Why aren't you guys backing up your words? You're making the Shield look like idiots here. They're saying they will kick Evolution's ass tonight, but instead, Evolution's like, no, no, you can't do this. We're just, we're just going to send out the 11 guys that attacked you last week to surround us because this is how we work. And it's good, Evolution being a smart heel group, but if you really want the Shield to look like strong baby faces, you have them attack those 11 guys, and even if they get beaten down, who cares? They talk about how they don't give a shit that they get beaten down because they're just going to come back stronger. Hell, make this Shield look weak more. It would help them, I think, at least. And at least you could say, well, at least the Shield, they looked weak here. But 
hey, they backed up their words. They said they were going to try to attack Evolution, and they did it. But instead, they just scream at Evolution. This is not like the Shield is trying to challenge Evolution into the match. The match has already been made for Extreme Rules. They already announced the match for Extreme Rules. We know these teams are facing. It's not like the Shield is trying to get Evolution to face them. It's not like that at all. It, it, to me, it just felt like they were just bored. They didn't know what the fuck to do. They were just like, I go out there, cut a promo just to build up the match. They had no rhyme or reason or belief of what direction this, this segment was going. And, and that's just the truth to me. I just felt the WWE was lazy with this whole segment overall. That they, they just didn't care. They just wanted them to get out there to cut a promo. But why make them cut a promo and say all these badass things just for them to ultimately just scream at each other? I understand people say, oh, they, they shouldn't touch. But the match is already announced. And it's not like the Shield is going to touch Evolution. They're going to fight the 11 other dudes. At least make the Shield look badass or make Evolution look sleazy because they can adapt and they can run away from a the situation. They know how to survive. I don't know. Maybe that's just me overanalyzing it. Maybe it is. But I just overall thought that the WWE did a poor job with this segment. It... <sighs> Paige just screaming. Rusev is going to face R-Truth and Xavier Woods. Consequences Creed. Truth and Consequences is back. And who cares? Who cares that it, Rusev is going to be two guys he had, that he's going to destroy? I don't. It's not like Creed and freaking Truth are main threats to him. They aren't. So why should I even care <laughs> that they're facing Rusev? I mean, the mid-card's just not looking good right now. I mean, I, I feel bad for just saying like two videos ago, oh, the mid-card's getting stronger to WWE. I mean, Paige, all she really has been doing as Divas Champion is going, ah! And all Rusev is is just, a fat guy with a hot chick next to him. That's that's how I see it right now with these guys. Can't wait for Bo Dallas and Adam Rose to come out, please. I really need some fresh mid cutters to like, especially Bo Dallas. <laughs> I love me some Bo Dallas, and you guys know that if you watch my NXT reviews. <sighs> John Cena stuff. I don't know what to say about this in all honesty. I don't care about Bray Wyatt versus John Cena. It is a match that you could argue should have been Extreme Rules. It's a match Bray Wyatt is going to win no matter what. They're setting up for him to win this match at least. That's how it looked. It's just that why does the WWE have to go so far and just make it where Bray Wyatt is just pretty much controlling the WWE Universe. Like We, we can't have where the WWE Universe just plans out hates John Cena. We still have to make Cena look like the hero at the end of the day. Even if Bray Wyatt wins at Extreme Rules, Cena's still going to look like the ultimate winner. That's just it. That is just it. And and to me personally, it just, just bugs me just watching this feud. Because it had so much potential to be a, actually a really, really good feud between Cena and Wyatt. But now it's just that I feel like it's just being fed to John Cena to win it all. At the end of the day, that's how the dispute is going to be. It's just going to have Cena winning it all at the end of the day. Yeah, Bray Wyatt could get his winning Extreme Rules only once. And Bray Wyatt did look good here tonight. I ain't denying that. But in all honesty, who who really cares? Because we all know Cena is going to win at the end of the day. He may not win at Extreme Rules. But overall, when you look at the feud, who's going to be the ultimate winner? It's going to be John Cena. I, I mean... In all honesty, this Raw was really bad. If you liked it, good for you. I just felt that it made me do more of this with my pillow than actually make me stay up and watch the whole episode. Anyways, guys, that's it for my review. This Raw gets like a D. It's a solid D at least. They did some build up, so I can't hate on it too much. But it's a D show. D. That's sign language for D. Anyways, guys, if you like me, you can subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Make sure you send in your questions for the q and I'll be filming the Q&A. Judging based off my time of when I might be getting home from school, I'll be filming the Q&A 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So West Coast Time, California Time. I live in California. So you have until then to really get your questions in for the Q&A. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. Like I said, if you like me, subscribe down below. Check out my website, chillingwithchase.com. Follow me on Twitter at ChaseLover68. I'll see you all next time. Peace.